What's up guys, JT Anime and Nerd here bringing you all that nerdy goodness. This video is going to be the first video of my version of the Snyderverse slash DCU and how I would have handled it and continued Snyder's story. This is of course this of course is a Man of Steel rewrite, but it's mainly meant to keep what Zack Snyder wanted to do with Superman, just kind of taking certain characters that weren't fully utilized their full potential or used at all and putting them in, in Superman. And story, such as as the inclusion of Jimmy Olsen, Lo in Lois Lane's intern photographer, and Lucy Lane, Lois Lane's sister. So, with all that explained, let's get into the rewrite. It begins with a Kryptonian couple. Jor-El stands by while his wife Lara Zor-El struggles to give natural birth to their son, but succeeds, naming their boy Kal-El. On the meadows of planet Krypton, it was as if the baby's cry was responding to the wildlife. As the sun sets, a shattered moon is present above the planet of Krypton. Kryptonian ships surround the capital city of Kandor, where Jor-El warns the Kryptonian Council of the planet's inevitable destruction due to the expenditure of its resources. As the Kryptonian Council asks for a greater solution from Jor-El, General Zod appears to take control of Krypton, killing a council member in response. Jor-El tries to reason with Zod, but Zod instead asks Jor-El to join him and eliminate the bloodlines he blames for this catastrophe, to which Jor-El refuses. While Jor-El is being escorted down a hallway by Zod's men, a Kryptonian drone appears to distract the men and give Jor-El a chance to retaliate. Jor-El contacts his wife and tells her to ready the launch. Jor-El go goes outside to find that Kandor has been turned into a battlefield leading the Jor-El to call down a winged Kryptonian beast for transport. Jor-El makes his way to the Genesis Chamber to acquire the Codex that gave Krypton its artificial life, a mysterious skull etched with strange markings. Zod's men attempt to take the Codex back from Jor-El by force, but fail, leading Jor-El to make his way back to his wife and child, but losing his flying companion Haraka in the process. After reuniting with his family, Jor-El readies the Codex and plots a course for planet Earth, knowing what the sun will do to him, and how the people of Earth will react. Lara tries to make excuses to keep Kal-El at her side, but Jor-El's words allow her to relent. After saying their goodbyes, Jor-El imbues the Codex into Kal-El's cells, and forms the key to his ship. Jor-El and Lara place him into the ship, placing their dreams with Kal. Meanwhile, General Zod blasts through the doors and enters the launch station. As Lara gets the pod ready with Cal uh, ready to launch, Feora, Zod's second-in-command, tells Zod that an engine has been detected, leading Zod to realize a launch is happening as they speak. As Zod enters the launch station, jor waits with his Kryptonian armor donned. Zod demands the Codex, with jor claiming that Krypton has a ch second chance to thrive and reveals that, that they, they've had a child, the first natural birth of Krypton in centuries, which Zod calls heresy. Zod attempts to stop Jor-El, but Lara launches the pod despite Zod's pleas. Enraged, Zod kills Jor-El, and Lara can do nothing but cry for her husband. In response to Zod's demand and to know where the baby is, Lara simply tells him that Kal-El is beyond his reach. Zod attempts to have one of his ships destroy Kal's pod, but the Kryptonian Council's army stops him in the nick of time. Moments later, Zod and his crew are sentenced to be imprisoned within the Phantom Zone, but vows to Lara that he will find Kal-El. After Zod and his crew are transported into the Phantom Zone, Lara awaits the inevitable, telling her drone Kelor that, that Jor-El was right, that this is the end. Before dying in the explosion, Kara tells Kal to make make a better world than theirs. After Krypton explodes, Cal's pod eventually reaches Earth and crash lands on a farm in Smallville, Little Kansas. Years later, Kal-El, now named Clark Kent, is working on a fishing boat. Clark's almost hit by a falling fishing cage, but is saved by a fellow fisherman. The boat then gets word of an oil rig fire on fire, to which Clark, someone the captain refers to as Greenhorn, decides to act, act on his own and try to save the people on the oil rig. After evacuating the people, Clark attempts to keep the rig from getting destroyed from a falling piece of the rig, to which he succeeds, but gets put, pushed into the water below. 
unconscious in the water. Clark looks back to a day at school where his super senses were overwhelming him, leading him to hide in a school hallway closet. Clark hears the kids judge him while his mom tries to com comfort him after she arrives at the school. Clark claims that the world's too big, and so Clark's mother, Martha Kent, tells him to make it smaller and focus on her voice, allowing him to control his powers and exit the closet, giving his mom a big hug. Back in the present, Clark steals some new clothes and attempts to get back home to Smallville. Having another flash flashback, Clark thinks back act to a day when his school bus caught a flat tire and fell into a nearby river. Unbeknownst to everyone, other than his childhood friend Lana Lang and his childhood bully turned friend Pete Ross, he saved everyone, and he also saved Pete from drowning. Days later, Pete eats Ma Om tries to pry eye into Clark's family's business, it's telling Clark's parents about what her son saw all pertaining to Clark's powers and preaching them as an act of God. Meanwhile, Clark's dad, Jonathan Kent, tries to tell Clark that he needs to keep his powers hidden, and that there's more or at stake than just the people around him. As Clark begins to question if he's cursed, Jonathan decides to show Clark the pod they found him in, and the key they found on, on that was said to not even exist on the periodic table, revealing that Clark is an alien. Despite Clark's resentment of himself, his dad tries to tell Clark that there was a reason he was sent to Earth. Back in the present, Clark works as a waiter, but sees a fellow waitress being harassed, leading Clark to intervene and almost get into a fight. When the harasser, moments later when the harasser exits the diner, he comes to find that his truck's been destroyed in an inhuman manner, mo mainly due to him uh, belittling and Clark and treating him badly before he left. Meanwhile, in the Arctic, a reporter from the Daily Planet named Lois Lane and her intern photographer Jimmy Olsen arrive on a military site, being there to investigate something abnormal buried in ice. Lois and Jimmy meet with Colonel Hardy and Dr. Emil Hamilton, all investigating a 20,000-year-old ship of some kind under the ice. That night, Lois sneaks away from the site to take some pictures, only to notice someone head for the direction of the buried ship. Meanwhile, Clark heat visions his way through the ice, discovering the Kryptonian ship beneath it. Clark investigates and finds a panel for the key to his ship, and then inserts it, but not all the way, a, causing a Kryptonian defense drone to attack him. Clark shuts uts it down by inserting the key all the way in, but then sees what appears to be a familiar man down the hall. Lois Lane enters the ship, while Clark continues to investigate, seeing this man appear left and right. Just then, Lois encounters the Kryptonian defense drone while Clark finds a decayed Kryptonian body within a pod, as well as an empty pod. After taking a picture of the drone, the flash of the camera causes it to lash out and attack Lois. Hearing the commotion, Clark steps in to save her. After a slight panic, Lois calms down, and Clark checks to find a wound on her body. Warning Lois about the pain beforehand, Clark decides to cauterize the wound with his heat vision causing Lois to scream in a, in a great pain. Suddenly, the Kryptonian ship it rises and flies away from the military site, revealing to Hardy and Emil that it, this was an extraterrestrial ship. Lois is later found on an iceberg, doing her best, and then, and then, and moments later, does her best as to post the story of her encounter with the ship and the unknown man. However, Lois and Jimmy's boss, Perry White, deny the, sto eyes the story, not not wanting to take the alien thing seriously. In response, Lois and Jimmy do whatever they can and to find Clark. Meanwhile, Clark is somewhere else in the Arctic, now face to face with an image of Jor-El's consciousness. Jor-El reveals everything to Clark, that he's his father, his birth planet of Krypton, his birth name, and even the story of Krypton, uh, the Kryptonian expansion, an era where Krypton spread its reach to other planets. With the scout shit, Clark is standing and being one of them. Jor-El states that they've used machines to terraform planets for over 100,000 years and flourished by accomplishing wonders. Sadly, when artificial life for Krypton was founded, the space exploration and outposts were abandoned. This resulted in using a, up the planet, their planet's resources and making Krypton's core unstable. Jor-El then explained that General Zod would attempt 
to take over Krypton, but ensured Clark's safety on Earth before Krypton was, would be destroyed. Jor-El then shows Clark the Genesis Chamber, the place where Kryptonians would be born artificially, revealing that every Kryptonian child's role was predetermined before birth. However, Jor-El's belief in freedom led him and Lara to give life to Clark, their hope for an embodiment of choice in life. Jor-El then reveals that he and Lara were tied to Krypton's fate, and so had to die with it. But Jor-El told Clark that he can embody both worlds, as he was much a part of Earth as he was of Krypton. Jor-El then presents Clark with his Superman suit, telling Jor-El to give humanity a hope, what the symbol of on his Kryptonian suit which stands for in their language. Clark exits the ship, Don in his Superman suit. Jor-El's voice then explains ends that Clark's powers are tied to the yellow sun's radiation. Superman then begins to test his flight, not getting the hang of it at first. Jor-El's voice tells Clark that he'll give humanity something to strive for, and that they will join him in the sun in time. Clark then tries to fly again, finally mastering his new power of flight. And with that, we come to the conclusion of part one of this rewrite. This movie, of course, is long, the script is long, so I'm going to have to split this movie movie into parts how many parts i don't know we'll see how it goes those but i know this didn't this felt less of a re like a rewrite and just more like a small addition considering the only difference was jimmy but but again i thought a man of steel was perfect the only additions i really felt out to make were, were of jimmy and lucy lane who you who will be introduced in future parts uh but uh, until then if you like this video don't forget to like share subscribe Put down the comment section and below on what uh, you liked or didn't like about this re e write and what uh, you would, would possibly like to see in, in, in the in the future parts. Uh, with all all that said and done, un, I'm JT An Anime, and I'll, I'll check you guys later. And hashtag Restore the Snyderverse.